Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. I had this look on my face like, is it working? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for your patience. Okay. Hi, Sarah. We have quite Hi. a bit of folks joining uh, today, so give them time. And you can see the slide up? I can, thank you. Okay, I can drive the train at your at your uh, call. Cool. <laughs> Give folks another minute or so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yep. <laughs> um, so as you might have just heard, we will be recording our uh, workshop today. And the reason for that is because for anyone that's not able to join, they'll be able to benefit from the information oh. uh, because it will be posted on our website. Okay, um, good. So uh, just something to be mindful of. So again, okay. All John, right, see ya. John, if you could please mute yeah, yourself. Right. Or Sarah, if you could. No, I got him. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. And um, again, if you can remember to go ahead and mute yourself, and then you can certainly unmute if you want to ask a question. Um, but good morning to everyone. Happy Monday. Um, welcome to the Delaware Community Foundation's Capital Grant Workshop. We're happy to offer this opportunity to you. Um, throughout this workshop, we will go through, you know, um, what we're looking for for this particular request, what makes sense. We will go through the application um, by uh, literally going through the applications, the questions that we'll be asking, um, what we're looking for, and then also answer any questions that you have. And those questions could be anything from, you know, we have this specific need at our organization, is that a fit? Um, or do we need to include X, Y, Z? So to get things started, um, would love to, Thank you, Sarah. Um, go ahead and ask Sarah to introduce herself um, at the, the DCF. So Sarah. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Grunwald. I'm the Executive Vice President for Strategic Engagement. Um, and I get to work with Yolanda on um, all of these great grant programs, as well as a lot of other fun things. So thanks for joining us this morning. And like Sarah said, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourselves in the chat so that we know who's here. Hi, Jennifer. Um, some of you that we've already talked to and some of you we haven't. So we'd love to meet you um, through the chat and otherwise. So we'll go ahead and get started and go through the workshop. Again, reminder, this is recorded. It will be posted on our website so that folks can benefit from who aren't able to join today. Um, so Sarah, next slide. So what are we looking for? What's the purpose of this capital grant? The point of this is so that you can get support for your specific capital needs. So it's um, like it literally says here, final stage design, construction, repair, renovation. So roof improvement, um, parking lot improvements, um, any sort of capital needs that you have for your organization. You need new windows, um, basement waterproofing things like that. And we can get into the nitty gritty of that. Um, this is a statewide effort. And so we are supporting nonprofits that are in just Newcastle, just Kent or just Sussex. Or if you are an organization that's providing statewide support, you are able to benefit from this um, capital grant process. And um, we are certainly always looking for something that's going to have lasting positive impact. And what do we mean by that? Really, it's about, you know, how is this capital need going to help you benefit your organization or achieve your mission? So, but for the use of our, our roof, you know, our constant roof is leaking. And so therefore we are not able to execute our programs because we have this leak in our office. Understood. That's how you're able to um, support the mission of your organization by getting this capital need fixed. So what are the key factors? Number one, of course, no surprise, you do need to be a nonprofit. We do not support for-profit organizations. So only, um, and you do need to have designation from the IRS to state that you are a public charity 
and a uh, 501c3. Another key component, and I will be checking for this, past recipients must wait a completion of two capital grant cycles for another capital grant. What does that mean? That means if you got a capital grant last year in 2021, you would not be eligible in 2022, you would not be eligible in 2023, but you would be in 2024. So think about that as an example. So you must wait two years or two cycles before you can apply again. Um, so I will be checking for that. And then lastly, what's the range that you can ask for? It's anywhere from five up to $20,000. So what were the past um, so, uh, projects that we supported? Last year, this just gives you an example. You can look on our website. We do have a press release um, for all of the grant programs that we offer. We share that out with you. So if you wanted to see, you know, what did you support in years past, please go to our website and you can see it. And there's also a snippet here. The total cycle, the total dollars that were granted out, you'll see is a little over $260,000. And that went out to 16 organizations. What did we support? Georgetown Presbyterian Church. We supported their basement updates, including waterproofing, bathroom, and accessibility. And they were able to articulate to us that they um, operate very specific programs benefiting their community in their basement. And so that is why they needed these updates. And that is how they were able to achieve their mission by getting these um, capital projects completed. Mom's House of Dover. They were able to get their outdoor recreation space with a new ramp and updated decking so that they can provide childcare programming to the kids that go there. Um, City Fest, they were able to get construction for their um, amphitheater and their urban artists exchange. It's just a project that's over there by Clifford Brown Walk um, here in Wilmington, Delaware. And then interfaith community housing were able to replace windows and insulation for their organization as well. What's the process? Everything is online which is great, even before the virtual environment came to be. Um, everything must be completed online. And what we need you to do is one application per organization. Um, no other formats will be accepted. In the years past, the DCF did accept paper applications. We don't do that anymore. Everything must be completed online in our grant management system called Foundant. If you do not already have a, a username, password, um, account, within the system, the way in which you can find it is by going to our website. And when you see the tabs up top, you'll see the tab that says nonprofit and then apply for grants. And then that's where the list of uh, open opportunities become available or are available to you. And where it says, you know, apply now, you click on it, it will, it will take you to the grant management page for Foundit. Um, if your organization, this is key, and we'll talk about this as we go through the app. But if your organization has gotten funding from us in the past or um, someone you're replacing someone at your organization, and you know they already have an account, but you yourself do not, please reach out to me and I'm happy to get you set up so that we don't have duplicate accounts for one organization. And if you know that's already there, let me know. I tried to find them. But if you know there's already duplicates, please let me know and I'll merge them. Um, but again, if there's an account already made for, say, um, Spartan Pack, I remember Jennifer seeing Jennifer's name, um, and then Jennifer didn't have an account, she would call me and say, Yolanda, I need you to set me up, connect me to Spur Impact, I'll do that for her. Um, so again, we don't want to create duplicates, so just let me know if you need help in any way, or if you forgot your password. Um, so what's our schedule? The schedule for the grants is that um, two things are happening. They're currently open. It opened on October 17th. The deadline is November 16th. So from now, or really tomorrow, <laughs> starting tomorrow through the 10th, we have something called office hours. And these office hours is an opportunity for you to, to connect with me and Sarah, um, depending on our schedules. And we're using a system called Calendly, which you'll see the link in a moment. You use that to schedule time. 20 minutes, 30 minutes to, to connect with us and say, is this the right fit? 
um, being able to have that opportunity to talk to us, you know, what should I include? Um, what quotes do I need to include? What information shouldn't I include? Um, that's what those office hours are for so that we and um, we can talk to you and really find out if it's a good fit. And what's the benefit of that? The benefit of that is you don't want to submit an application that you know it's not going to be a good fit or that might not get funding. Your time is valuable. So we want to make sure that you're submitting an application that is, has some legs to it and that has the potential to get support. Um, so if there's any question at all, schedule time with us to talk and just ask the question. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, virtual site visits with all applicants in early December. Well, what does that mean? This is something we started after the pandemic, um, and it's really a beautiful thing that came out of it. Um, what we found is that um, there were times when, you know, our, our previous process was that, you know, if you were a top ranking application, that's how you got an interview with us. And um, typically it was done in person. But now that we're in this virtual environment and we're realizing that there were applications that we missed um, by doing that whole process, we said, why don't we meet with everybody? And so that's what happens when you apply. Once you apply your application submitted and it's through, it's during the evaluation process, I'm going to email you and say, these are, this is a link to use to schedule time with the grants committee. It is on you to schedule. I'm going to bug you um, to schedule it. But if you don't respond and schedule, you're going to miss it. There will be points docked from that because these interviews are important. And because what happens is that we all know these applications have character limits. You're not always able to share out the the true passion for your organization, the true benefit that you have to your community throughout in these applications. So that's the, what comes from these interviews, these one-on-one -on -one connections with the members that are reviewing your application and with me and Sarah or just me or Sarah. Um, but it's an opportunity for you to share out what it would be important for the folks that are making the decision that you weren't able for you to share out with them that you couldn't share in your application. They're gonna ask you questions. One of the top questions they will ask is, what did we miss? What weren't you able to share that's important for us to know in your application? Um, so these interviews are important. Um, so please be on the lookout for an email from me to schedule and schedule it. Make time to do that. Um, if, you, if you yourself aren't able to be there, please have a key person that's a part of the project that could be there. And what that looks like for capital, it could be someone from your maintenance team. It could be someone from your programmatic side. Um, it could be your ED, your board chair, someone who's able to fully articulate the need of the project and um, the ben how it will benefit your organization. Approvals will happen in December, 2022. Um, I say this every year, it is always our goal. It would be great to get these funds to you. They're directly deposited before the end of the year. We will try our best. Um, but if we can't, it would be shortly in the first of the year um, that you'll get the dollars directly deposited to you. I'm going to pause here for a second and ask, uh, see if you have any questions yet. I do. Hi, Yolanda and Sarah. Good to see Hi. you. Um, so we have as probably many nonprofits do, several capital needs. Um, and so say one is only, you know, $10,000 or, you know, $11,000. Could we apply for two capital needs at the same time and, and articulate both of those in the same application if we're allowed to apply up to 20,000? That's an interesting question. I don't know if we've had that in the past. Sarah, what do you think? Yeah, it is a good one. So I think um, when we have, when we've gotten kind of a bundle, it's usually things that have to do with each other. So we need HVAC and windows and that's, you know, those go hand in hand in terms of weatherization. Um, so that would be, that would be my um, feeling on that is that if they go together, if they're part of like a, you know, overall um, upgrade that, that you can tell that story, that'll be more successful than I think um, two distinct ones that just kind of look like they're trying to get in together. I would agree a hundred percent. Perfect. That's doable. Thanks. Okay. We can advance. 
please. Um, so this is the link uh, to schedule on the, the schedule calendar. Um, it's always a fun word for me to say. And um, I will send this out to everyone that's attending today so that if you are able to take the time, want to take the time to schedule time with us, um, you'll see it's from the 1st to the 10th. And they're 20 minutes long. And the beautiful thing about this site is that it pulls my calendar and Sarah's calendar and it looks for open slots. And then you're able to pair that up with your own to see what times um, marry up with each other well so that you can schedule with us. So we'll, I'll make sure that everyone has it available to them. What is our review process? So you submit your application, what happens next? What happens next is that I will review the applications for completeness. And what does that mean? That means um, I make sure that you have attached all of the documents that you need to. Um, and then I also make sure that the budgets are attached because you will we'll go through the application, but we'll be looking for a project budget. Um, and then an organization budget. And so we wanna make sure that those two items are there. And sometimes people forget, um, it's important that it's there. So that's what completeness looks, looks like. And then I will assign it to our grants committee. They will have about two weeks to review your applications. Um, and they are paired up. And so each one, each committee groups, they're paired up into groups. They have about 10 to 12 applications to review, depending on how many we receive. And then after that, you'll be scheduled for your interview. And again, that's about 45 minutes long is how long those interviews are. So review for completeness, committee members have about two weeks to read. They'll meet with you. And then after the virtual interviews, we come back together as a full group. And then we discuss the application, the interviews, and funding. What funding capacity do we have in terms of dollars? And then what does that look like? And what, how many asks did we get? You know, what's the gap there? And then what are we able to do? We would love to be able to fund everyone. Trust me, we would, but we know that there are going to be some declines. It does not mean necessarily that there was something wrong with your application. It could literally just be, we didn't have enough dollars to grant out. So that's something important to keep in mind. Um, and once we have our slate of applications up for approval, we will submit them to our board of directors for their review. And then once we get their approval, we're able to pay you. We're able to give you your funds. Um, and again, those are directly deposited. I say that because if you don't attach the voided check like we asked for, I can't directly deposit it. And then therefore a check will be mailed to you. So application, all right. And this is what found it looks like when you log in to the system. This is the, the login page. Um, and if you ever log in, again, if you're someone who knows that there's an account already for your organization, but you don't have one, please contact me. If you forgot your password, you can just hit forgot password and then it's easy to set up a new one, okay? Uh, your applicant dashboard. Uh, this is good to to look at because you can see here, it's a very user-friendly program. So if you've not used it before, it's great. We, we love that. Um, but you're able to see what your active requests are and your historical request. One thing I don't like about it though, is that there are times when it will say a grant is undecided and you know already that it's been decided. It can be a little confusing. If you ever have a question about that, just email me or call me and say, Yolanda, this is confusing. What was the final decision? Happy to share it out. Okay. Um, so on the application, the first part that we'll be asking for is your organization information. Pretty simple. Um, but what might be different to you if you haven't applied to our applications in a while is that you'll see it says NTEE code. Why are we asking that? We're asking that because we're trying to get a better understanding of who are we getting um, request from in terms of category of organizations, so art-based, community-based organizations, um, healthcare, education, et cetera. So that's why we're asking that. It is a da data gathering point for us. And then of course, your mission statement, we look at that to tie it into um, your request to make sure there's a, a match there and then how you're able to, there's a later question of how are you able to achieve your mission by completing this project? 
what's the connection there? Um, geography served. This is for your organization. So who are you serving? Are you statewide? Are you serving Kent County, Newcastle County? Um, and then contact information. That is for the person completing that. Marianne, I'm gonna mute you for a second. Okay, um, details of your project. So what's the name? An abstract. Abstract is important because what we do as an organization, what you may or may not know, at the foundation we have fund holders. And we have fund holders who at times will ask us, you know, I'd like to learn more about what the needs are in the community. And we like to share that information with them. We're not going to give them the full application, but we will give them the abstract. So we'll pull and say, this is what we've received from our capital grants round. These are vetted projects from our, our grants committee. Please take a look at these. And would you like to join us in supporting these organizations? So that's why these abstracts are important. And that's how they'll be used. Uh, project timeline. This is important because we will not support projects that have already happened. We're not a reimbursement grant. We're a grant that wants to support your project that's in the future. So that's why that um, those dates are important to ask for. And the, how we use that is we know that the dollars would be granted either the end of December or the beginning of January. And so therefore we want something that's going to go beyond that, not something that's already stopped before the funds come in. Um, amount requested, budget estimates and quotes. Um, so project budget, pretty clear cut there, right? So we want to know, you know, what is the, how much material do you need? How will the dollars be used? What are they being used for? Estimates and quotes. I know it's a scary word right now <laughs> because of everything that's happening, but those are important. And that's why it's important because we know that projects, um, materials are expensive right now. They're more expensive than what they've ever been. And it helps us in our granting phase because we know that when you're asking for, you know, $10,000 for X material, we might think it's ridiculous. But if we're looking at your quote that substantiates the cost because of the real increase of cost of materials right now, it helps us understand that better. So please get some quotes and estimates um, so that we can better understand your full ask. Right. And how are you using the dollars? This is a narrative, the use of funds piece. That's a narrative um, response. And so it's to say, you know, DCF, we're using these dollars to get a new roof. Here's why we need a new roof. Um, population served. So this is um, before we ask for geography, population served is who are the people? Who are the people that your organization is serving? Are they children? Are they adults? What are the ages? Um, are they, you know, um, at risk in any way? Like help us understand who you're serving as an organization. Um, again, that helps with the ask, the overall picture of what you're doing. Community impact, that's a huge one. You know, what are you doing in the community? How are you impacting them? And I, I cannot stress this enough either. We talk about this a lot at the DCF and specifically with our grants committee. It does not matter if your community impact is one person because that one person might be benefiting immensely from the programs that you're providing. Um, and so if it's just one, I don't want you to shy away from that. Tell us that story. How are you impacting that one person or that one family? And if it happens to be 250 people, great, tell us that too. But I we would love to be able to hear from you on what is your true impact in the community, even if it's one person. And then other sources of funding. Again, the full picture of your project. If your project cost is $75,000, you're asking us for 20, how are you feeling that gap? Are you fundraising? Do you have a revenue arm for your organization? What's the, the delta for that and how are you gonna fill it? Okay. If I could just add uh, one thing about impact, um, in addition to everything Yolanda said, you know, these capital grants in particular can be tricky because um, how do you make a roof or a parking lot really exciting? Um, but that's where the story, that's where the, 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 the there's an the opportunity to really, um, tell the story and get people excited about a parking lot. So. Absolutely. Um, okay. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. So 
If you've applied to our grants recently, you might have noticed that we're asking questions specific to DE and I. I want to start off by saying this is data gathering. This is not a point to, to ding anybody or to say, you know, we're using this as a way to make our funding decisions. This is a way for the DCF to again tell a story on who are we supporting in our community and how. Um, and the only way that we can do that with full confidence is getting data. And we're getting that data from you. And um, so what we're asking for here is the demographics of your board and the population served. What do we mean? It's everything from, like it says here, gender makeup. If you know how the person identifies as a female, male, non-binary, great. If you know it, please respond. If you know what their racial ethnic makeup is, whether they identify as a white woman, a white man, black woman, a black man, Latino, Pacific Islander, Native American, all. We would love Asian American. We would love for you to include it here. Age, if you know it, that's mainly for population, not for board. <laughs> um, we're not asking the age from your board members. That's for population served. And then list any future goals related to DE&I. Um, that is for us, again, to better understand what is our community doing as a whole? How are you as an organization responding to um, the, the need to be more inclusive? Um, we would love to know. And perhaps it's ideas that we can even share out to our own fund holders and our own community. But again, reminder, this is data gathering. This is not something that's going to be used to make a decision for funding. Um, and respond to the questions the best of your ability. If you do not know the information, just say, I do not know, I do not collect this information. And we, we understand, we would love to be able to have it though, because again, it um, allows us to tell the story of the DCF is supporting the community as a whole, and here's how. Here's who our grants are supporting. And, um, and not only for board makeup and why do we use board, what we have found in our community foundation um, sector is that staff, there's a lot of turnover in staff within the nonprofit industry, and that's okay. And more often than not, board members are more indicative of representation of the nonprofit as a whole in terms of its diversity. And perhaps that can change over time, but at this moment in history, the um, board makeup is, is the best um, measurement to use. And then for population served, this one is a tricky one. And I say that because uh, um, what I have noticed, many organizations like to say they serve everyone. And sometimes it might be difficult to um, really say, I know exactly who I'm serving, um, but more than say you're a children's museum, your focus is children, but you're also providing a service to mom, dad, and grandma, right? Because if you might have some programs that are targeting them, um, but to your best of your ability, if you're able to share out with us who you're serving and who's your target audience for your, your organization in terms of population, that would be great. Okay. So, um, required attachments, the statement of revenue page, that is not your full 990. It is just the statement of revenue page. Um, so if you're able to pull that out, that would be great. Um, it's not the full 990. You do not have to attach that big old document. It's just the statement of revenue page or board approved accounting. Um, your organization's operating budget, project budget. And I noted here that that's under capital project detail section. Uh, just so you're not looking at the last page, like that's not on here. Um, your board of directors list, IRS determination letter, and then additional attachment. Excuse me. The reason we're asking that is, again, much like the interview, the character limits limits you. And so if you have more information, like an infographic, pictures, we love pictures, um, to share more about your organization, you can add it here. And then the good old payment authorization page. We want to give you your funds through ACH. This is where you would attach the voided check or letter from your bank. And I think, Ilana, correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of the quotes, if you have them and estimates, the best way to do that is put that together with the project budget, right? In one document? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
And if anyone has any issues with that, uh, please let me know. And then how is the grants committee going to be scoring your, your application? Here we go. It's a grants rubric. Um, and these are the, the top ranking pieces on the rubric. And these are the, the three questions. So if you were someone who were looking at the full rubric, there's, um, you know, if we can think of it, of course, I'm blanking on what it looks like at the moment. But if we could think of like all A's, these would be the all A column. And then it just goes on from there. So project details, um, your focus, it's realistic and measurable. We don't want you to think that you have to present something that is completely unrealistic in terms of you are achieving your goal. We don't want that. If your goal is really going to take you two years to complete, okay, because we're going to be able to tell, right? When we're reading your application and if an organization says they have this big capital project and they're completing it in a year and it's really going to take two years, it will come through. Um, that might actually hurt your, your request. So be thoughtful about that. Be realistic. Um, and then how you're going to measure that success and what that looks like for you. Um, and then again, you'll see here that the proposal demonstrates strong case for how the project aligns with the organization's mission. Remember before when I said my le my roof is leaking, therefore I cannot use my, you know, this particular room to execute programs. And so we are huddled in a closet, you know, something, so, you know, that's a silly example, but it really demonstrates the fact that you're not able to achieve your mission because your roof is leaking in this main area of your, of where you would normally do your programming. Um, community outcomes and impact. Um, it clearly shows how your community defines community need and barriers to thrive. So what do we mean by that? Um, the best example that's come into mind right now is a food desert, right? If you're in an area where you need food and your organization provides food for this, um, for this community, that is a need, this, that's a barrier to thrive. And the, the, therefore this is how you're over, you're helping your community overcome that. Um, and then you're able to articulate the intended outcomes of the project and then also what your, your organization is doing as a whole. And then funding request project is clear and reasonable. Again, we'll be able to tell if it's something that just doesn't make sense. We'll ask those questions too and the interview. So be thoughtful about it. Um, does not need to be overly complicated. Just look at it and say, look, this is our need. This is what we're asking for from the DCF. This is overall budget, but here is what um, we think is really reasonable and realistic um, request for you, for you know, from you to the DCF. Yep. So what happens if you get a grant? Share it. Tell everybody. Share it out on the the web, um, your social. We will do the same. And then in terms of reporting, what that looks like. You have a six month and an end of year grant um, report. So six months is um, that is, you know, asking for pictures. How are things going? Any fun updates to share? Any unintended outcomes that happened as a result of the the project? And then the end of year grant report is virtual. Um, we will have some questions that you'll respond to within Foundant. But then it's a meeting with us um, through Zoom. And then, you know, hopefully we can move to something else later. But, you know, we will be doing it's all an, an interview and a conversation of what happened um, throughout the grant year. And then if you do not get, oh, excuse me. And then a last, very important piece, which we talked about earlier too. When you get a capital grant, you have to wait two cycles. So literally two years before you can apply again. And I will check and I'll just respectfully say, unfortunately, you're not eligible because you received a grant. And if you don't receive a grant, then you may apply next year. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And I think that's it. We're open for questions. Oh, oh um, right. This would be important too. So what's not supported? Um, I know it can be a little frustrating when you're thinking, well, this is a need and I'm a part of, I'm on this list. Why aren't you supporting us? Um, we wish we had the, the bandwidth and the capacity to support all organizations, but we're not in all needs. Um, so what that means is that office equipment, you know, table, chairs, that none of that is going to be eligible. Um, sports clubs, leagues, or facilities, uh, public or tuition-based educational institutions, purchase of vehicles, um, 
endowments, religious organizations for sectarian purposes. You may remember that one of the organizations we supported last year was a church, but it benefited a program that was open and available to the community as a whole. That's something, a clear distinction to make there. Uh, annual fundraising campaigns and then projects completed bef before December of the current fiscal year, because remember we said, we're not a reimbursement grant. We want to support projects that are going to be going on beyond the, the payment cycle, either at the end of December or beginning of January. And then you'll see the balance of the list here. Special events are important too. Okay. And then of course, any questions, um, you may certainly reach out to me. I will put my email in here. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to put it here, um, but I'm also on the web too, so my contact information. And now we are open for questions. And Sarah, before we do that, do you have anything you wanted to add? I don't think so. I'll just go we'll back up to the, um, just a clarification on the waiting if you get a capital grant, um, it's only you only have to wait to apply again for capital. You can apply to our other um, opportunities. So sometimes that's a question. But no, love to hear other thoughts or questions from folks. I see Shanique uh, put a question in, and you're asking when is the next grant capital grant cycle? If the organization will use a shared space owned by another nonprofit, example, rent a church in need of space updates, are we able to apply? So the next capital grant cycle will be this time next year. And shared space owned by another nonprofit exam. This is, I think this has come up before and let me know if this isn't what you mean, but um, uh, so uh, renovations or updates to a space that you're renting, um, is that eligible rather than a space that's owned? And it's come up before, um, and it's hard for, um, it has been hard for the committee to kind of, unless there's a long-term lease in place, um, something that demonstrates that you and the community you serve are going to be able to benefit from that for a long time, um, that would be ideal because if it's, if there's a possibility that this renovation improvement would happen and then you move to a different building next year, then it kind of is, feels like, you know, we left that renovation for somebody else. <laughs> um, so we can talk more specifically if you have, like, if you want to talk about your details. I have a question sure. pertaining to that. Um, Andrew Scott from uh, API. Um, so what happens if, are we allowed a partnership with the person that owned that space? So for example, let's say that um, part, uh, that um, organization owns like a, the community center. If the community center owned that space, is let's say my um, nonprofit is my nonprofit allowed to partnership and um, fill out the application? That's a great question. I think Yolanda, jump in here, but I think we would want to see the organization that owns it be the um, applicant because that's the entity that's going to get the funding. With so, if you could do it in collaboration. Um, but the, the the lead applicant should be that owner organization. And then a reminder too, that it would need to be a 501c3 organization. Okay. Yes, I'm responding to Samantha's question too in the chat. Um, but yes, I would agree with you, Sarah. Any other question? Um, I have another question. Sure. Um, so I, I went in and looked at the sample application and the character limits. And the first question I'm struggling with the project abstract says include a brief description, the need for the project and the population it will serve. If I answer those three questions, I'm well over 250 characters. <laughs> um, is that really 250 ca characters or should I be just really limiting my answer to a title for the project? in that one? That's the first question. Hmm. Well, I can see if I need to increase it, but it's really, it's, it's not a lot of information that goes into okay. this. It is that, okay, I am replacing a roof and, you know, the, it's, it's small. 
It's okay. not a lot of because that's what's going to be used to share it with um, fund holders. And then if they want more information, which they would ask, then we would give them more details, right? But it's 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 a it's a small piece. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, we we might want to bump it up a little bit, but I to, like I definitely agree. It is that's it's kind of like a soundbite um, that we can share with people to to if they're you know seek their interest. You said that was your first question. Did you wanna? Did you have anything else? Happy to hear. Oh, sorry. No, I meant that was the first question on the application that I. Oh, excuse gonna, me. Okay. I have no, I'm good. Everything else should be good. I think. Okay. Yes. I have another question. Now, when y'all said the parking lot, now, does that include the playground if we want to develop a playground? Oh, uh, no. Say more, please. Uh, so let's say the um, property wants a playground. I know that you said um, we do renovation. Let's say if the, the, uh, the basketball courts are um, messed up and the playgrounds are outdated, are we allowed to put that in? Um, to the grant because that will help the after school program or help the uh, neighborhood community children. Are we allowed to apply for that? For that renovation? That sounds like perfect. Yes, I mean, we would happy to meet with you um, for one of our office hours to learn more about your organization and what the trend is. Um, but, but yeah, so one of the projects that we've supported in the past with, with um, Cornerstone West, and that was to the playground. Um, oh my goodness, I'm blanking a little over there by Cool Springs. Okay. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And I see that there's some questions, and I'm responding privately to them. But about you know the the two years, it is wait. If you applied, so if you got funding in 2019 but it would be for fiscal year 2020, which doesn't make sense. But say it was 2020 funding. You would wait 2021, 2022. That third year, yes, that's when you would be eligible because you're waiting two full cycles. Yeah, it's we, we, we label them by the fiscal year. So that's what I always have to go back to. If you got it in what, you know, our fiscal year 20, um, then you've waited 21 and 22 and now we're in fiscal year 23, yep. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I just, I wanna clarify, like, so we applied in, in November of 2019 and the award letter is of March of 2020. So the fiscal year would be in 2020. So does that mean that because this application will apply for fiscal year 2023 that we're eligible? Yes. Okay, so, okay, all right. I just wanted to check. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Unless there's any other questions, um, reminder that we do have office hours. The workshop um, recording will be posted on our website and um, certainly always available for questions by phone or email. Well, thank you so much for your time, everybody, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Thank have you. Have a blessed day. You're on there, Sarah. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.